A proven formula that leads to long-lasting behavioral change, sustainable outcomes, a healthier and happier you, yeah, it exists. Welcome back to our channel. We are integrated nutrition consultants. We are a team of registered dietitians who are just passionate about helping others achieve their health goals. And speaking of goals, it's January, the biggest goal setting month out there. Most people are looking to either add some positive behaviors or remove some negative ones. But how do we make these really last? It begins with daily habits. As the great philosopher Will Grant said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. And in order to talk about habits, we have to first talk about behavior. Behavior is everything. We are who we are because of our decisions that lead to our behaviors, which create our identity. Okay, now the renowned behavior researcher BJ Fogg at Stanford University states that behavior happens when three things come together at the same moment, motivation, ability, and a prompt. Now we can visualize this model in two dimensions. On the vertical axis is the level of motivation for behavior, and it can range anywhere from high, aka I want to do the behavior, to low, I do not want to do it. On the horizontal axis is the ability to do a behavior. It's also on a continuum. Okay, so on the left, you know, behaviors are hard, and then as we move to the right, they become easier to do. Now there's a relationship between motivation and ability. This curved line called the action line shows the relationship. If someone is anywhere above the action line where they have high motivation and you know high ability, when prompted, they will do the behavior. If they are below the action line when prompted, they will not do the behavior. Now, suppose you wanna eat more vegetables. If you really wanna do that and it's easy for you to do, then you're gonna be in this top right portion where anytime there's a stimulus or a cue to action, you're gonna do it. However, if you really wanna do it, yet it's hard for you, then this will be frustrating and even stressful, okay? And then on the other hand, if it's easy for you to do, but you have a really low level of motivation to do it, to eat these vegetables, then this behavior is gonna be distracting, even annoying, all right? So all in all, if you find yourself struggling to stick with the desirable behavior, there's a good chance that one of these three areas is lacking, whether it's low motivation, low ability, or you just don't have a well-designed prompt to you know, inspire you to, to do that behavior. So let's really talk about each of these areas and how we can you know, improve them. So let's talk about how people improve their motivation. All right, first up, knowledge of consequences. All right, this happens all the time where someone has a health scare that inspires change, or let's say you were told that you were pre-diabetic and unless you change your food choices and eating behavior, you might be diagnosed with diabetes, a life-changing condition. Now, consequences could also be weight gain or fatigue, but simply being aware of what may come certainly can change levels of motivation. Next up, we have developing a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. If you truly believe that change is possible, if you view adversity as an opportunity as opposed to an obstacle, then your self-efficacy will naturally improve, which is arguably the biggest factor that leads to changes in motivation and behavior. And number three, social support. If you have a strong support system around you, friends, family, mentors, or other professionals who are positive influences in your life, or perhaps even keep you accountable, then there's a good chance your motivation will improve. And fourth, we have intrinsic reasoning. Doing something because you genuinely enjoy the activity rather than for a specific outcome. You know, BJ Fogg says that people change best by feeling good, not by feeling bad. So with food, you know, find ways to make healthy, fresh food taste delicious or learn to love the process of cooking, all right? Let's move on to the next area, how to make behaviors easier. Let's say you are highly motivated to make a certain change. The next thing you really need to ask yourself is how do I make this behavior just easier to do? It, it sounds simple, but most people miss this key element. First strategy is to just develop skills and knowledge. Let's use the example of wanting to eat more vegetables. 
you know, by improving your culinary skills, maybe learning to cook vegetables using different methods to make them taste better would make this behavior easier. Strategy number two, identify and remove barriers. Let's say one barrier for you to eat healthier is that snacks like chips and Oreos are always in your pantry, making it easy to reach for those when you have a craving. So consider modifying your environment. If you make fresh vegetable snacks easily accessible, like on your counter or in your fridge, making a healthier choice will become easier. Or let's use time as another barrier. Maybe you consider getting an air fryer, you know, to prepare a medley of veggies in like less than 10 minutes. Now, finally, make the behavior tiny. This strategy is hands down the most effective way to make a desirable behavior or habit easier to achieve. Whatever new habit you come up with, shrink it. Make it so small that on your most challenging of days, you will be able to accomplish it. And then over time, you'll build on it and gain momentum and eventually develop healthy habits that become automatic. So, you know, rather than like aiming for five servings of vegetables a day or one green smoothie every morning, simply try to just have at least one single vegetable each day. Make it small. Okay, so now you're at the point where you are motivated to develop a specific behavior and you have made it easy to achieve. The last step to really transform and cement that behavior into a habit is to design a successful prompt or trigger that ignites you to perform that behavior. So there are really three types of prompts. One, you know, we have external prompts. These are like alarms or phone notifications. And then next we have internal prompts, like our thoughts or emotions that remind us to act. Now, action prompts, on the other hand, is what we should really focus on. You know, the completion of one behavior, which reminds us to start the new behavior. All right. So find an existing habit or behavior that you do already and often, maybe even every day, something that is automatic. And then, you know, for example, you use the end of brushing your teeth as the prompt to do 10 push-ups. You can leverage the momentum you already have to ignite the action for your new behavior. Dr. Fogg recommends using the following formula or recipe to create your new habits inspired by an action prompt. So after I blank, you know, fill in this existing routine in your life that will remind you to do the tiny behavior, I will and then you put in your new, you know, desirable behavior. To wire the habit immediately into my brain, I will immediately celebrate by, and then fill that in as well, something you do to create a positive feeling inside yourself, all right? So like, for example, after I walk into the grocery store, I will go directly to the produce section and select five vegetables for the week. I will immediately celebrate by saying out loud, I am succeeding with making healthier choices, or simply give a head nod and smile to yourself. Now that last piece, celebrating your successful action, no matter how small is vital. Fogg says when you feel successful at something, even if it's tiny, your confidence grows fast and your motivation increases to do that action again. It is a key component to growing your habits to eventually turn into automatic behaviors. And here is just a, a list of some additional celebrations to consider. Now, I have been giving examples with food and nutrition because, you know, I'm a dietitian, but these strategies work with any behavior. Here are some more examples that Dr. Fogg mentions. After I pour my morning coffee, I will open my journal. After I sit down on the train, I will take three deep breaths. After I put my head on the pillow, I will think of one good thing from my day. After I walk in the door from work, I will switch my phone to airplane mode. And after my feet touch the floor in the morning, I will say, it's going to be an awesome day. All right, so just to wrap things up, in conclusion, one, decide on a specific behavior to adopt, which is related to achieving your ultimate goal. Two, shrink your desired habit to make it easy to achieve. Three, use an action prompt to trigger your tiny habit. And four, celebrate the completion of the tiny habit.
Yes, behavior is deeply rooted, but just remember small changes can change everything. So I hope you learned a few things in this video. 2023 is gonna be a good year. Again, my name is Jack O'Connor, registered dietitian. This is Inc. Nutrition, where we are all about mind, body, and food. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you wanna know anything else about nutrition, and I'll talk about it. Till next time, peace. Thank <music> you.